In this video, we're going to install these ball bearing guides on my old Shopsmith bandsaw to see if it improves it in any way. We'll find out. Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here. Here once again is my garage shop, and I'm continuing to do some things to this old Shopsmith bandsaw that I purchased recently. If you missed it, I've done several videos, one where I installed two different brands of urethane tires. Um, I've also done videos describing and showing how the Shopsmith bandsaw is a unique animal. If you have one of these bandsaws or are curious, check out those videos. Of course, I'll link to them below. Now, I reached out to the folks at Carter because I knew that they had this ball bearing guide set. And, you know, I've made no secret of the fact that I like the standard steel guides on the Shopsmith bandsaw. I, I've not had any problem with them, with the exception being using a very narrow blade, an eighth inch blade or smaller on this bandsaw. But for what this set is designed to do, which is to be used on pretty much any bandsaw blade, I've not had a problem with the steel guides. And, and because of that, I reached out to the folks at Carter and said, hey, I'd like to try them. I don't think I'm interested in buying them, but if you've got a loaner set, I'd be happy to give them a try and I'll send them back to you. So they sent me not just this, but also another guide that I've been curious about. And this one is designed specifically for narrow blades. Now, we're not gonna do this one today. We'll do this in a future video. But uh, I just wanted to give you wanted to give you a full disclaimer there. While this isn't exactly a sponsored video, I didn't pay for these. So my opinion is my own, and uh, we'll just see how this goes. First things first, uh, we have to remove the blade, of course. Uh, but I'm also going to remove the table. Now, it's possible that you could exchange these guides with the table in place. But it's going to be a lot easier to do with the table off. And it's certainly going to be easier for you to see in a video. Now, if you've never squared your table, I'm not talking about square in this direction. I'm talking about square to the blade. If you've never done that, it probably isn't square to the blade. And so there's a simple process of shimming the table that you do one time ever. And if you haven't done it, it's worth taking a look at that process. Again, I covered that before. We'll link to that in another video in the video description. This particular bandsaw happens to have the latest aluminum table um, the original Shopsmith bandsaw table was made of cast iron, and, and quite honestly, it works just fine. Um, people have asked me, gee, would you upgrade to the newer table? No, I wouldn't. But if I had this table, I have no problem with this table. <laughs> so here's the thing. With this table on it, there's an aftermarket fence available for making, uh, for resawing and for making straight cuts. But the original cast iron table allows you to use the Shopsmith miter gauge mounted in this direction, which allows you to use the, the miter gauge as your fence. It also adjusts freely to accommodate the drift of the blade. Uh, one other thing that is possible on this machine is there are a couple upgrades you can add. One of them is this little extension that slides out from underneath the table and it's level with the table surface. I've not had this one out before and look at how rusty it is. This shouldn't surprise me considering the condition of everything else <laughs> that I've encountered on this machine. So I uh, gotta remember to clean this off and apply some wax to it while I'm at it. This should really come as no surprise to me. <laughs> there are no shims. When you got your bandsaw from Shopsmith, it came with the table detached in the box. And the first thing you do when you assemble it is they walk you through the assembly, including the use of those shims. The guy that I bought this machine from rushed through everything, didn't do any alignment. So yeah, no shims. Gotta go buy some shims now. So here are the steel guides from above the table. Let's see, I can move that up and down. Here are the guides from beneath the table. You'll notice that the 45 degree angle is what allows the table to tilt. I could have been using cool blocks here, but as I said, I'm, I'm not. So let's just to see that, you can see how we can loosen these guide blocks and pull them out. Now, oftentimes they'll have a pretty good burr on them from use and they won't pull out quite so easily. So be prepared. You may have to give them a little bit of a push with a screwdriver to get them to slide completely out. But those came out just fine. Now what we have to do is remove this casting and we do that by removing a screw back here 
on the guide that moves these guide box forward and back. On the Shopsmith bandsaw, the thrust bearing does not move. Because of the auto tracking feature, the back of every blade runs against the thrust bearing on the bottom and just ahead of the thrust bearing on the top until you begin your cut, in which case you're pushing the blade back against that thrust bearing. So we only move the guide blocks forward and back. But I want to remove these guide blocks, which means I have to remove this adjustment screw in the back. Let me show you that. So to remove this, we have to remove this little uh, knob right here. And we do that by inserting a flat blade screwdriver into a machine screw right there in the interior of that knob. Unscrew it. until it comes out. To get this part to move, you might need to spray a little lubricant in there, a WD-40 or something to penetrate. I'm gonna use my rawhide mallet at first. If I need to, I'll use my screwdriver as a punch to punch this and move this part completely out of the saw. Let's try it just with the mallet. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide this up go and we can just use a screwdriver to drive that all the way out now there is a little flat leaf spring inside of this square port that we want to be sure we don't drop and I'm just going to swap this out with the upper guide now, I'm not finding anywhere on here where these are noted as being top or bottom but there is a difference between the two and that difference is if I align those together where they look like they're in perfect alignment with each other, you'll notice that there's a notch on this side and a notch on this side. We want to have some room for our thrust bearing here. Now, this is going to go in this location. Here's our thrust bearing. And so if we were to position it this way, we would be hitting the thrust bearing. So with the thrust bearing, um, with the bearings down below it, this tells me, because my knob is on the right side, this is going to be the correct one to have on top. And there we go. Now we'll just hold that in place with the knob that we just removed. Got to make sure that the knob is going to catch that slot. To do that, it looks like I need to back that screw off just a little bit more. There we go. And then That's all there is to it. Move that forward and back, that moves the guide bearings. So that was straightforward. If we compare that to the original position of the original part, it looks like those ball bearings are just ever so slightly lower, which might affect the maximum capacity. We'll have to check that out. So here you can see that spring a little bit better as it pushes up against this post. Let's give this a quick little spray. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm using Bow Shield T9 here. And then let's loosen that. All right, that's off. And we'll give it the old tappa tappa. And 
that's easy enough. And you can see that spring just dropped. We've got to be sure we get that back in its correct position. So the spring needs to be up against, against the outside here. Now here, you can tell by the notch. The notch is designed to face the side here, but I, I don't think that that's going to work. I think that'll put the bearing... Yeah, see that puts the bearing... That puts that block way too close to the bearing. So that, that needs to be disassembled and flipped over to work properly. I just dropped that spring. All right, so for this to work properly, we're going to have to loosen that set screw, and it appears to be round on the end. We should be able to rotate that around to get that notch on the correct side. Very interesting. All right, so that's a 332nd set screw. Let's see if we can simply rotate that around. Yep, we sure can. Which means we can also fine tune that once it's on the saw. Okay. And then let's make sure that that spring is where we want it to be. And bring that into place. Okay. So let's put a blade on here, get some tension on it, and see how this works. So with this backed off as far as it'll go, give us a little bit of a spin. Let the auto track bearings do their thing. And there we go. It's now in its final point where it's resting against the thrust bearing on the bottom. And then I should be able to adjust this forward to just behind the gullet on the teeth. All right. And then let's, let's bring the lower guides down so you can see those as well. And we can bring those forward. And then we're going to uh, keep in mind there's a little bit of a space here. So when you push against the wood, the blade moves back to the thrust bearing. And so it is in that position that we want to be sure that our gullets are behind the bearings. Okay, now we're going to use that same hex wrench. And we're going to move those ball bearings in on the blade. No, it's not the same hex wrench. So in a nice move, they're using 532nd Allen head screws here so we can put the standard Shopsmith toolbox in place and move the bearing over. Oh. We've got to tighten up that 332nd set screw quite a bit more get to it. There we go. What you don't want to do is to be pushing the blade sideways from its natural position. There we go. Now we're basically right alongside, not applying any pressure. 
stop moving the blade. Wow. Again, that requires quite a bit of snugging with the 3 32nd wrench. There we go. And again, it rotates. I wonder if we need to put some Loctite on that connection once we're happy with it. There we go. Could want them tight enough, but not so tight that they move the blades. So I'm going to loosen the bottom ones just a bit. Well, did you see that? Here we go. Oh, that sounds way better, too. All right. I think we're in business. Okay, I can see how that would work. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to tear into this in our midweek episode, and uh, I got to get some shims, get this table back on, and get all that aligned properly. And uh, in our midweek episode, we'll make some cuts with it, see how they behave, and tackle your questions, comments, and cheap shots that you leave in the comments below on this video. So if you have any questions, for sure, leave them now. That's it. Make it a great week.